Good morning on this 28th day of April and uh, we're here to bring you some thoughts for the day again to hopefully help you through the day. Uh, we start as usual with a scripture which today comes from John chapter 3 and verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. To read the Bible in a year today, we're moving on through 1 Kings chapters 3, 4 and 5 and Luke chapter 20 verses 1 to 26. Some thoughts for the day. Either you control your attitude or it controls you. You should always leave loved ones with loving words. It must may be the last time you see them. <clears throat> Never confuse movement with action. The motivation for the day. Never stop. One always seems to stop just as something is about to happen. On this day in 1789, led by Fletcher Christian, the mutinous crew of the British ship The Bounty set Captain William Bly and 18 loyal sailors adrift in the South Pacific Ocean. In 1947, on this day, explorer Thor Heyerdahl and his crew set out on his Kontiki expedition to prove that ancient civilizations could have sailed on balsa wood rafts from Peru to Polynesia. In 2019, American diver Victor Vescovo made the deepest dive ever to the bottom of the Mariana Trench at 10,927 metres or nearly 36,000 feet. What did he find there? He found a plastic bag. What a sad comment. In 2021, NASA's Parker Solar Probe became the first spacecraft to cross the Elfvan critical boundary, the outer atmosphere of the Sun. The personal story of the day is headed A Lifetime of Blessing. Our point follows from Peter's question recorded in Matthew 18 and verse 21. Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Since the Jewish rabbis were said to forgive three times, Peter's question may have been just showing off, in which case Jesus' response humbled him. Or Peter may have really been trying to grasp Jesus' teaching on forgiveness. In that case, he was shown how far short his understanding of God's love really fell. Central part of Christian calling relates to us being sincere about the duty of forgiving and even committing to practice the duty often towards the same offender. This act betrays those who claim to be true children of God for none but the graciously minded will permit themselves to be exercised in that fashion. For us to imagine that a pardon repeated once or twice would exhaust our obligation reveals a gross ignorance towards the righteous and divine will of God. Poor Peter, in his exaggerated attempt at super-righteousness, he was like a child standing on tiptoe to make himself as tall as his father, or perhaps climbing to the top of a hill to get near the sky. So how many times should we forgive? In Matthew chapter 18 and verses 22 and 35, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. And from the heart, seventy times seven is a figurative number to show that true forgiveness doesn't keep score. It comes from the heart. You can see Genesis chapter 4 and verse 24 for a contrast. From the point of view in the parable of Matthew 18, chapter 21 and 35, it makes no difference if the debt is millions or only a few dollars, or if the grievance is a major grievance or just a minor matter. Forgiveness wipes the slate clean. In fact, in view of the Bible's description of forgiveness as remembering no more, 
we might say that every act of forgiveness is a first time. There are no limits to genuine forgiveness because God's love is infinite. Jesus' direction to forgive came with a warning, verse 35, and Matthew chapter 6 and verses 14 and 15. If we don't forgive others generously and genuinely, God will treat us as the king did the unmerciful servant whose fate we read about in James chapter 2 and verse 13. The measure we use will be measured out to us, but if we were truly forgiven by God, his love will be in our lives the fruit of forgiveness for others. Genuine forgiveness is as relevant as genuine repentance. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 13 we see that Jesus tells the Pharisees, But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Some seem to make an issue of willful sin versus sins of ignorance. Jesus' parable ends that distinction. Any sin that happens more than once would no longer be ignorance, particularly as the person is rebuked, repentance required, etc. Any sin that happens seven times, let alone 70 times, let alone 490 times, could hardly be classified as ignorance. And yet, we are commanded to forgive, or else we risk our own spiritual lives. Those who won't obey, nor take time to understand God's love, are willfully sinning themselves, and are guilty of a greater sin than the original sinner. We are not permitted to put a stumbling block in the way of those seeking repentance and forgiveness. Again, we risk losing our own lives. In today's parable, Jesus clearly instructed his disciples about the unrelenting nature of forgiveness. True forgiveness knows no bounds. Is there someone in your life you've chosen to stop forgiving? This person continues to wrong you time and time again, and you're tired of forgiving him. Ask God to help you to renew a love and forgiveness for that person, all the while knowing that you continue sinning against God, yet he persists in forgiving and restoring you upon request. The devotional thoughts for the day. The first is entitled, Good Morning to You. When people greet each other, they usually say, How are you? At one time in China, the typical greeting was, Have you eaten? In the days of poverty, asking our friends if they had eaten was to express concern for their well-being. Today, when friends greet each other, they often say, Have you put on weight? Whether they're just genuinely concerned for my health or just think I could lose a few pounds, they care about me. Everything we say, not just our greetings, reflects the concerns of the heart. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 18, Those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. He was explaining to his disciples that people could not be morally contaminated by the food they ate, but rather by the words spoken out of unclean hearts. It was not a big surprise that Jesus' bold statement offended the Pharisees, verse 12. They were great at appearing righteous on the outside, but they had no concern for the hypocrisy in their hearts. As Christ's disciples, however, our focus should be on keeping our hearts clean so that our words will reflect genuine righteousness. It's wise to think about the words you use throughout the day wherever you go. What do your words say about the condition of your heart? The second uh, thought is entitled, Call Yourself Blessed. And the scripture comes from Numbers chapter 23 and verses 20 to 23. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. 
the Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, What hath God wrought? King Balak hired Balaam to curse Israel. He knew of the power of both blessing and cursing. He knew that words were carriers of either life or death. He did not understand that God's blessing was above the cursing of man. God had already, since Abraham, blessed Israel. Neither Balak nor Balaam could change this. Even though Balaam tried to curse Israel, it was only blessing that came from his mouth. God had already established that Israel was blessed. In verse 20 we read Balaam's word, Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. And out of Balaam's mouth came the most wonderful prophecies concerning the prosperity of Israel and the coming of the Messiah. Balaam was forced to admit that no sorcery helped against Israel, no false prophecy was effective against Jacob. This is true for us as well. When we are in Christ Jesus, people can slander you, criticize you and plot your downfall. And while this can weigh you down and cause you to fear or to be offended, you must decide not even to listen. Their words cannot harm you as long as you choose not to listen to them. According to the book of Proverbs, these undeserved curses will not alight but simply fly away like birds. You are in Christ. You are not perfect in yourself, but you are blessed. If others say you are cursed, call yourself blessed. The curse over your life has already been broken. Hopefully you will understand how abundantly the Lord has blessed you. The facts of the day. Clinophobia is not the fear of clinics or hospitals. It is the fear of beds. Tahapophobia is the fear of being buried alive. A couple of lighter moments for today. Uh, stories about husbands and wives. My wife and I are inseparable. In fact, last week it took three house leaders and a pastor. <laughs> a beggar walked up to a well-fed woman who was witnessing in the square and said, I haven't eaten anything in four days. She looked at him and said, Oh Lord, I wish I had your willpower. <laughs> Do you know the punishment for bigamy? Two mother-in-laws. The last fault. The last fight I had with my wife was definitely my fault. My wife asked, what's on the TV? And I stupidly replied, dust. <laughs> the thoughts in verse for today. We're back to uh, count your blessings, which is hymn number 80 in our uh, chorus book. And we're now looking at verse 2, which says, Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear count your many blessings every doubt will fly and you will be singing as the days go by count your blessings name them one by one count your blessings see what god has done count your blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done the closing thought for today i'm thankful for the mess to clean up after a party because it means i have friends. Thanks for joining us today. Have a blessed day. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye for now.